Hello, I'm Emma Louise Coffey and you're welcome to the Dairy Edge, the Chagas Dairy Podcast. We're bringing you the latest information, insights and opinion to improve dairy farm performance. On this week's episode, we are finding out more about the lean concept and why farmers can look to implement it. Lean leads to greater efficiency, reduced time spent at tasks, improved farm safety and increased overall profitability. John Murphy from Dairy Gold and Marion Beecher from Chagas join us to tell us more. The original concept probably goes back to Henry Ford and the the manufacturer of the Model T car. And then Toyota post-World War II took this up and their efficiency approach that they brought to their production system. But it was then probably Womack and Jones in the early 1990s who really launched uh, Lean through their book that they produced, The Machine That Changed the World. So it was from the early 90s that lean principles started to be adopted across a a wider number of industries and not just the car manufacturing industry. And and looking to Dairy Gold, obviously you've caught on to this concept and I guess you were early innovators when we think about dairy processing within Ireland. Um, You know, why was this of interest to Dairy Gold? So Dairy Gold took it up back in 2012 and the, the reason f- that it was looked at was the, the end of quota was looming for the start of for April 2015. And while Dairy Gold had, uh, was investing a lot of money in steel, it was believed that at the time steel alone wasn't going to get Dairy Gold um, through the, the tidal wave of, of milk that was going to be uh, approaching the, 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 the business. So it looked to, to see how it could improve its overall processing and it, the, the overall way that the business worked. And um, with the support of Enterprise Ireland and Richard Keegan, Lean was, was seen as the, the, the way to, to address this. And talk through how this worked, John. What did this look like on the ground? So from a dairy gold perspective, what it looks like is that each, each area of the business has a, a physical area where, where, the, where the teams now meet weekly. Uh, it's where data is displayed on weekly performance of the area, the priorities of the areas, their actions and areas are identified for improvement. The working areas as well are all laid out so that it's clear where the tools are for use they're located closer to where they are used and clutter has been removed. So, so the workplace area is a lot safer. The work itself has been standardized so that now everybody does the job the same way. This, uh, which is considered at the time to be the best way. And then this significantly reduces variation in any processing that that's, takes place within the business. We've templates in place for problem solving. So that's leading to identifying true root cause and preventing recurrence of issues. And we have frequent continuous improvement meetings, identifying improvements that that can be made then across the business. Talk through the real benefits, John, that you're seeing at Dairy Gold as a result of implementing Lean. So we've seen significant improvement in communication, alignment and engagement across the business. So now every area in the business is working to to a common goal. Communications are, are swift um, decisions are made based on data, not hunches, leading to far better outcomes. It's easier to locate things uh, to, for people to do their job, and that's removing you know, a lot of frustration and making it easier for people to do their job. Processing uh, and efficiency benefits are seen right across the board. There's improved overall safety as the workplace is laid out better. Uh, processes are standardized. Everyone's doing the, the job the same way, which has yielded quality improvements and overall financial benefits are seen with constantly striving to make tomorrow better than today. And take us a step further, John, into the farm. At what stage did you think this was a runner or this was something that was doable at farm level? I suppose once it became clear that, that implementing lean at the processing level was a success and yielded benefits, and then considering the challenges facing the farmers on labour, milk price and, and safety, um, this was back in 2016, 2017, um, and considering then the symbiotic relationship that, that Dairy Gold has with its suppliers, 
Uh, we just had to look at, at how we could apply lean on the farm. And what way did you go about that, John? So our, our, our initial approach was uh, we decided to run a pilot. We wanted to understand what elements of lean would or would not work at the farm level, how it would be adopted at the farm environment, and to try and understand how we could expand the implementation then to around 3,000 suppliers and ultimately make it self-sustaining. So we selected a range of farm sizes, uh, geographical spread, and spread in experience profile. We included uh, both the farmer, their partner, and uh, the families where were appropriate in, in our approach. We provided classroom-type training on the principles and the tools of lean with potential examples of how it could be applied. We then worked one-to-one -one with the pilot group of farmers and their families with uh, both our continuous improvement coaches at, at Dairy Gold and the milk advisors coaching um, uh, coaching the farmers through the various uh, steps, tools, and, and principles of lean. We then brought the pilot group together a number of times uh, on each other's farms in order for, for, the, for, one, for each of the pilot farmers to understand from one another what works and what doesn't work. And then following a review of the, the pilot, we modified our approach to the training and coaching. Um, and once we got approval from the board, uh, we've rolled it out now to 3,000 suppliers um, with Dairy Gold. And to support this larger scale rollout, we've developed 18 what we call go-to farms where we have now subject matter experts in various areas of lean. And these, these farms are open to farmers visiting and essentially learning by seeing. Probably just two other points in, in that we've developed now a lean farm section on the Dairy Gold Supplier website where farmers can get access to some of the templates and training guides and access to, to tips and ideas. And we're continuing to roll out the, the classroom type training backed up with visits to to farms um, to, to support the, the rollout. A few statements that John mentioned that we might pick up on, Marion. You're talking about standardising the process, improving efficiency, reducing waste and, and improving safety. You know, this is something that Dairy Gold have rolled out across their suppliers and we've seen it across other processes too. Is lean important for dairy farms? Yeah, they're all excellent points and I think John has touched on a lot of them already and I suppose from, from my perspective um, I would kind of see two reasons as to why farmers should approach lean and take on lean and um, one of them being that we've done a survey of 976 secondary school ag science students so these are people who are interested in agriculture and chosen to study it in, in for their leaving certificate. Um, and many of them viewed careers in dairy or dairy farming careers negatively because of hard work, long hours um, and poor pay. Um, and then I suppose the second reason is that we know farms are busy um, and we know that spring farms, you know, is, is this particularly busy time on farms. Um, and from a study that we did last year, farmers worked on average 63 hours per week in the February, March period. But there were some farmers in that study who actually worked up to 83 hours or more. Um, so this was long term, that's unsustainable for the farmer. Um, and it's also portraying a negative image to, I suppose, those people that we need to come into the industry. And then the other thing is that we know that more hours you work over 48 hours in the week, the more likelihood or the increased likelihood is that you're going to have an accident. Um, and we see that in that, you know, dairy farming and farming is one of the most dangerous industries to work in. So I think those are a few good reasons for farmers to, to, to I suppose, consider taking on lean on their farm. And John has highlighted that the, the lean process has been rolled out to the dairy gold suppliers. And if we look across the country, you know, other um, dairy processors have taken on the, the challenge too. And they're, you know, educating farmers with this new concept. I guess for people that this is fairly new for the Marion and they're listening in today. Can you give some examples of, you know, lean um 
and, and, and maybe case studies that you have come across in the past where farmers have made some changes, be it uh, big or small, uh, that have led to, um, I suppose, improvement um, as a result of lean? Yeah, so um, we would have done a bit of study in, in last year as well, where we would have looked at some of those farmers that completed the training in dairy gold and compared them to other farmers who hadn't completed the training. And we found that for those particular days that they recorded their time use, that those farmers that completed lean training spent less time milking and um, doing admin and business and repairs and maintenance. And then I suppose if we we would have looked at it, the milking process in a bit more detail with a, with a case study that we would have done last year as well, um, and we would have focused on one farmer. And I suppose this farmer, who was already I suppose, particularly efficient in milking, but he was unsustainable um, in the long term because he was actually doing very high rows of cows um, and I suppose he knew the next step really was to either upgrade his more his milking facilities and either put in extra units or build a new parlour um, on the farm and I suppose he said look he wanted to use lean first because obviously you know spending a lot of money on a parlour is it's a big investment and I suppose he wanted to make sure that his milking process was as, fish, as efficient as possible without investing massively so we worked with that farmer um, and we implemented some of the stuff that John was talking about, about you know, standardization and he created a standard operating procedure so that anyone coming into his, into his milking parlor could, could operate it without giving it um, without him being there after initial instruction. Um, we improved the cow flow a little bit um, and we also just, he just also improved his routine and we did that based on measurements as John said lean is all about making decisions based on data and not hunches so we worked with that farmer measured his process um, before we made any changes worked with him and identified where the changes should be made and then recorded again afterwards to see what that impact was and what we found was that that farmer even though he was efficient already he actually made a saving of 20 minutes in that in that short period so that was for the like late october november period so if we say that you know that farm managed to save 20 minutes per milking and so that would be 40 minutes per day and and then say take an average of a 280 day lactation and you know that farm is going to save 186 hours in the year and, and I suppose even if you take it that even if you might not be able to sustain that 20 minutes for every single milking, but even only take half of it, you're still talking about 60 hours in the year, um, which is uh, effectively one working week in springtime for the farmers that we measure. So there's huge benefits that can be um, gained from implementing lean on farm without necessarily incurring huge amounts of costs. And Mary, you know, you've taken us step by step through the milking process and how the farmer has made that more efficient. The other things that you've mentioned when you've compared farms that have implemented lean versus not is that they have reduced the time spent at administration and also repairs and maintenance. What did that look like in terms of that saving? Yeah, exactly. So so they were on roughly spending about 20 minutes less um, on those tasks. And the likelihood is that it, that those farmers were, were supposed to better organized. Um, so they weren't spending time looking for tools for completing a job. They had the, the tools and equipment set up ready to go for when they wanted to do that job. Um, and in terms of like in terms of the admin and business, the likelihood is that they were they were again better set up and better organized, that they had a dedicated office, they were doing that um, office work in the morning and, and keeping on top of it and doing it regularly. And Marion, again, um, looking at other examples, looking to visualisation and good examples of where farmers are well set up and well laid out. Are there any examples of this? There's, there's loads, there's plenty of examples. Um, so I suppose the, the main one and the easy one to do is in terms of um, the milking parlour, in terms of like incorporating visualisation into your standard operating procedure. So having a, a standard operating procedure, which is basically a step by step instructions as to how to operate something and incorporate pictures within that. Um, the other one would be in terms of, as John said, about improving communication um, and having whiteboards up in the milking parlor or in the office or having farm maps. Um, and I suppose even for farmers that aren't or have never even considered doing, using lean, 
the majority of them, are, I'd say all farmers are actually using lean without realizing it. So if we take it that, you know, animal tags, uh, something we take it for granted or, or freeze branding, you know, that's how we visually identify a cow or um, heat detection aids. So using tail paint or scratch cards, those are all visualization techniques um, that are commonly used on farms that would be considered a lean tool or technique that farmers are just doing automatically. I think we've got a really good picture of what lean actually means and at both a processing level within Dairy Gold and also across farms. I suppose to finish up both John and Marion, can you give us three practical tips each on how farmers can best implement lean farming? We might start with you, John. Okay, I, I, I suppose the first one is have a place for everything and have a visual cue to ensure that everything is, is in its place. When we were doing the pilot, we, we, we found that cutting down on searching for items that are used frequently in the day is the best way of removing uh, a great deal of frustration that the, that the farmers were facing. And I'm going to steal too that, that Marion had mentioned earlier, the installing the, the, the whiteboards um, and using these in key areas to identify what the contacts are, priority tasks, and any details on the cow or farm that other members of the family or any, um, any help that's, uh, that need to be aware of. And then using farm maps uh, to highlight the likes of where delivery should be dropped off or contractors are to work to avoid uh, unnecessary waiting around for people to arrive would be probably my three top tips. It's not rocket science. Um, probably everybody is already doing elements of it. it, it lean really is just a, a just structuring the improvements and uh, using just some techniques then to 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 accelerate those improvements and why 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 i say it's not rocket science is you know it's it, you don't need a um, a phd or a degree in lean to to be able to to be able to do this and and people will say when when we start going through um the the, the coaching people saying oh sure i've been doing this for years and you, you know they, they actually have they, just, they didn't have a name for it the biggest pitfall that we would have seen in implementing uh, lean was around communication and the what's in it for me rather than what's in it for the business. So, um, and we did find this as well with the pilot group that they, they were slightly skeptical at the start, wondering was this a dairy processor trying to get more out of the, the, the farmers. Um, so, you know, it, it was very important for us to, to highlight what is it, what's in it for the individual. And, and as I said, we, from a dairy gold perspective, we have this symbiotic relationship with the suppliers. So what benefits suppliers benefits the uh, dairy gold overall. Um, but each part gets something different out of it. And Marion? Yep, so just to, to build on John's one where he's saying about have everything, uh, sorry, I have the place for everything. I would say caveat that by saying, you know, don't try and tackle the whole farmyard. Pick one particular area and start with that. So start with something small. Give yourself a quick win that will build your confidence um, and then go on and tackle the next area. Uh, the next thing would be um, to maybe focus on milking efficiency. So we know from research that that's the where the majority of time is spent on dairy farms in the year. Um, so any, any um, I suppose, time saved in that area in, in, in milking is going to save you time overall and is going to improve your efficiency overall. And then the third um, advice I'd have would be to make use of available resources. So John has mentioned that the Dairy Gold website has an excellent section um, for its suppliers. They also have a, a, an excellent shop for and with a dedicated lean section. Chagas also have um, on our labour section on the website have a, a lean section where we have some templates um, 
and the case studies that we've worked on and we also have some standard operating procedures as well with on the website that can be adapted for your own firm and i suppose with that in terms of availing of available resources is to engage with your family and engage with your discussion group so build a support network and also there's actually a really good book by a new zealander um lean dairy farm by Jana hocken so that's something if someone doesn't know anything and wants to learn more is another really good resource I think we've got a really, really good picture of lean at this stage. And one thing that you mentioned, Marion, don't tackle it all at once because then it'll get overwhelming and you might just, uh, I suppose, give up early on one step at a time. And as the saying goes, Rome wasn't built in a day. I think if we look at the the overall picture of lean and a lot of the things you've highlighted, some really, really important things by um, about improving the safety of the dairy farm as a workplace. You know, lean has a huge role and there's a lot of different things that are, are going to impact the farm business positively improved communication, improved in, in the process and standardization of processes, um, you know, reducing the waste on the farm and improving profitability. Um, thanks for your time, John and Marion. Thank, Thank you. That's it for this week's episode of the Dairy Edge podcast. And my thanks to John Murphy and Marion Beecher for joining me on this week's show. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast. You can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. And for more information, go to the Chagas website at chagas.ie. I'm Emma-Louise Coffey and join me next time for your Dairy Edge.